huh, I guess with this new setup, you guys can see exactly how long it takes me to record one of these videos. That's exciting. What's up everyone, my name is Caleb Bronco. I'm a photographer and videographer based here in South Florida. And lately I have been on the hunt to find cheap vintage zoom lenses that cover three different criteria. One, they have to have a constant aperture throughout the range because I'm not dealing with any variable aperture nonsense. Two, they have to be somewhere between 24 millimeters and 100 millimeters because I think that is like the most useful range for just whatever you're doing. And number three, they obviously have to be cheap, or I guess a better word would be inexpensive because that's the entire point of this video. With these three criteria in mind, the lens that I ended up landing on was the Tokina 28 to 85 millimeter F4. This lens covers 28 millimeters all the way to 85 millimeters, which is what I consider to be the perfect kind of do everything range. Uh, so I was very happy about that. Although it is F4, so it's not the fastest thing in the world. It would be amazing if it was like an F2.8 the entire way through, but it's also extremely cheap and like 40 years old. So what are you going to do about it? While the specs of this lens might not be the most impressive thing you've ever heard, the price is where it really stood out for me and why I picked it over others. And that is because this thing cost $20 on eBay, which is less than it costs to fill up your gas tank, which is kind of nuts. So Tokina being a third party lens maker, because I don't think I don't think they had their own line of cameras or anything, but they made these lenses in a ton of different mounts. And the lens that I got has a Contax Yashica mount, which drew me to it because I knew that you can very easily adapt these um, CY mounts to EF. They had some others that were like Canon FD and Minolta MD and then a few other different mounts, but those do not play nice with EF at all. So I found, a, I found the CY mount, which I can very easily adapt to EF because then it can be used on a huge range of different cameras no matter what I plan on buying in the future. Something that really surprised me with this lens is that all of the zooming is internal, which I did not know when I bought it. So when you turn the zoom ring, the you can see the actual elements moving up and down, but it doesn't extend the lens at all. It all zooms internally, I guess that's what that's what that means, which usually is a feature on much higher end uh, video dedicated lenses. Um, so I was very surprised to see it on a cheap photo lens from 40 odd years ago. Something that I was not a fan of at all with this lens is that when you are focusing the entire front rotates, which is a very common thing with a lot of photo lenses, especially from this era. Um, but it's, it's a nightmare if you're trying to use like a circular polarizer or if you're trying to use a clamp on matte box, because it just, it spins or, or, or a streak filter. Oh, cause you're going to focus it and all your streaks are going to go fly in one direction or your matte box is going to be spinning around the front of your, um, lens. And that's, uh, that's no bueno. So with a $20 price tag and a full metal build, they had to have skimped out on like the image quality per se. And they, they did a, a little bit. While this lens is not sharp by any means, it's about on par with other similar lenses from this era where they're not sharp, but they're not like crazy unusably soft, which is, which also is like what we go for when we're looking at vintage lenses to begin with. One thing that I really don't like though about the image quality of this lens is that it is way sharper at 28 millimeters than it is at 85 millimeters. And it's not just like a little like bump you can, it's extremely noticeable that when you're wide open at F4, 28 millimeters is, looks great. It's honestly, it's, it's sharp. And then when you go to 85, it is like very soft and muddy and very unimpressive. It's, and there's just, there's like a ton of like ghosting. It's, it looks not great. And I think, cause I've messed around with the uh, zoom. When you have it zoomed, to 28 millimeters, you can tell in the lens that the aperture is closed a little bit. And then when you zoom out to 85, it kind of opens up into a full circle and you can kind of tell in the flares too, because at 28 millimeters, even wide open, it'll have the shape 
of the aperture. And I think they did this so that it could have a constant aperture all the way through, because I believe otherwise it'd probably be like an f2.8 to f4. If you want a consistent like zoom shot, you definitely have to go down to like 5.6 or f8 um, to have a consistent looking shot, because you will definitely know at 85 wide open. If you are into lenses that flare, you will absolutely love this 28 to 85 because it flares like crazy. My favorite is when you're at 28 millimeters wide open because you still the, the aperture is still closed a little bit. So you'll get all these like hexagonal like flares whenever you point it at a like direct <laughs> light source and they're like super warm colors and there's some that are like kind of purple. There might even be like a blue one somewhere in there, which I'm not a fan of the blue one, but like the purple orangey flares look so good. So if you if you like lenses that flare, this is definitely a very strong contender. Something that really surprised me about this lens is that it appears to be parfocal. All right, you want down? <laughs> this lens appears to be parfocal, which is awesome and not something that I personally expected when I even bought this lens to begin with. I think the number one thing that I do not really like about this lens is that the front rotates while focusing because I shoot a lot of car stuff. So if I'm trying to um, have a polarizer and an ND, um, it's if I have the polarizer on the front of the lens, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. Or if I have a matte box on the front, of the lens, it's just not gonna work because it's just gonna spin the whole thing. So that's probably the biggest downside for me, but I don't really plan on using this lens in too many like super professional environments. I mostly just got it for fun and to test out. Um, and then also it being much softer at 85 compared to 28 is kind of a, it's it's a bit of a bummer because um, it just, it makes those like longer zoom ranges um, wide open kind of unusable. One last thing that I am not a fan of with this lens is the minimum focus distance. Vintage zoom lenses typically have pretty poor minimum focus distances, but I've noticed this one is almost like, it's like two to two and a half feet. And that is so bad, especially at 28 millimeters, shooting at like F4 or F5.6 or F8, there is not a whole lot of like subject separation at all. It's uh, it's pretty terrible. So overall, I think this lens is incredible for what you, <laughs> bye. <laughs> overall, I think this lens is absolutely incredible. What you can get for less than a tank of gas in your car. It's, it's just so much fun to be able to try out different things that don't break the bank and you know, they just, it makes it fun. It makes it fun to just try out different things and you learn a whole lot of different things. You learn what you like in lenses, you learn what you don't like in lenses. If you enjoyed this um, and want me to make this a series, kind of hunting down some like not very well known um, lenses, specifically vintage lenses, please let me know down in the comments because I would love to keep doing uh, the research and finding different lenses that would work great um, just on a budget and just might have some like unique character, some unique flaws. All right, I'll see you.